everybody, it's me, Margaret, back for Plarn Part 2. Uh, this is actually an interesting topic, uh, apparently for a lot of people, besides just me. So, I thought it might be helpful to share with you some of the links that I've discovered uh, that have more information about Plarn, for example, different ways uh, to prepare your yarn, other than what I showed in my last video. And just... Uh, interesting people where where this this a plastic bag has changed their lives and I know that sounds kind of dramatic but it's really true in several instances so um the, all the links will be available down in that description box <clears throat> I want to tell you a little bit about what they are uh, so you can decide which ones are interesting oh and I've put them on a playlist on on my page on my um, channel so, if you want to see all of them, you can just uh, hit the playlist and off you go. Okay, the, uh, the first one that I'm giving you is from the, a community action group of Southern Kentucky. And that's the link that Linda, I spoke about in the last video, May Linda J, she shared with me about um, how to make the homeless mats. And ironically, Laura... Um, known as Fizzy Lifting Drink on YouTube, shared the same exact link with me. So, it's really a neat mat. It, you know, is made easily so it can easily fold up, tie together, and roll up, rather. Tie together, and then it has a strap that you sling over your shoulder, similar to the way one might carry a yoga bag or something like that. So, anyway, that's the first one. And then the next one, <coughs> Julie Ridge shared with me or with us on the Yarn Addiction site. And um, it's a how-to video by World Goods Fair Trade, which is the YouTube channel. Um, I am a huge advocate of fair trade. I, I only buy fair trade coffee and tea. Well, I, well, I, might, I might buy cheap tea every now and then, but uh, fair trade, if you're not familiar with it, is when you guarantee, when a company guarantees the people in which they buy the product from will receive a fair price. For example, coffee farmers in some of these third world countries, um, you know, you know, you can't predict the weather. And they could have a horrible crop and get hardly anything for all their labor and everything. Well, that's just farming, you might say. But these people are the kind that live on dirt floors and, um, wonder how they're going to put food in their mouths, much less get proper medical treatment and things like that. So fair trade guarantees them a minimum price, no matter what happens. So at least they can feed their families. So anyway, um, that's what World Goods Fair Trade is all about. But uh, in this particular video, Poverty-stricken women of um, West Africa will recycle the bags, and you'll notice that one of the first things she says in this video is, um, first you must wash the bag. And I'm thinking to myself, my bags aren't that dirty, but they are literally walking around, picking up the trash, picking up dirty bags out of the ground, and preparing them before they do this. So, uh, they turn them into these gorgeous purses. Uh, very talented, and then they sell them. And it's kind of like the old adage of um, you can give a man a fish and he eats for a day, or you teach a man to fish and he can eat for the rest of his life. And that's giving them a business that will provide some income for them. So um, now I feel kind of guilty and I really want to buy their purses instead of make some my own. So, um, but that's the purpose of putting it out on video, is to make us aware of what's going on. And then, um, along those same lines is um, some women in Africa who, now first of all, you do know that women in general in these areas are really um, second-class citizens, so to speak. So the fact that they have a way to work and to bring in some income is, is a good thing. We want to encourage that. These particular women happen to be, most all of them, she says in the video, are HIV positive. So, um, you know, they need the medical care and, and all the stuff that goes along with that. So that's another good video you might want to check out. And another one is um, 
trash weaving in Peru. And this man, it, the video starts out where you see him literally cleaning up the trash, uh, collecting the paper bags and pl plastic bags, and the, even it looked like maybe other types of plastic too that he is pulling out of the dirt that have just littered the environment. And then um, he weaves them. He spins it and then weaves it on a loom. And it's really interesting. But the cutest thing in this video is the grandmother. <laughs> she comes over and she's asking him, what are you doing? And he explains to her, oh, he's going to sell this in America as art. And um, she's just so proud of him. And it, it's, it's really cute. You need to watch that one. If you are a spinner, um, if you are, I mean, I, I have had, I've only seen people do this on video. I've never actually even seen anybody do this in person. And I'm so impressed with those of you who know how to spin. And you will like this other video that I have um, included where they do the plarn, they prepare it the same way that we talked about, and then they just spin it. And it's this tiny, tiny, tiny little, um, it's almost like twine. So, so it's strong. And um, so you might want to look at that. And then another video uh, is a lady named Ann, who apparently crochets as a business. And she had some super ideas and observations about Plarn and how it acts, how it behaves, so to speak. And um, she shows you particularly that if you make a bag with the um, Plarn, it stretches over time. And so she has figured out how, I'm sure she's using an inexpensive yarn that she, she weaves, not weaves, but she just holds together with the plarn to make the bags and it, and it eliminates the stretching, which is really good. So you, um, essentially it's still very inexpensive. You are recycling and you've solved a problem. So I, I thought that was clever. She also has a, a faster way to join the loops other than what I showed. Lay them down on the table and da 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 She puts them all on her arm and then she has this woo 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 method that she does. It's a lot quicker than mine, so if you choose to do lo loops that way. And, um, and there's lots of other ideas of what to make with the plarn, especially for those of you who sell your stuff. You might want to see that. And then last but not least, there is a uh, plastic flowers made from Plarn. Um, they're very careful about what colors they choose. They make them on a little flower loom, um, which would be a great way to, uh, well gosh, I don't know, I can think of all kinds of things that you might do with a little plastic flower. So it's worth looking at. I thought it would be interesting. So um, give me some feedback. If you found some good videos, um, include them in the comment section below so we could have uh, sort of like a little collection all together. I can continue to add to my playlist and um, you know, we'll, we'll keep this plarn thing going. Talk to you next week. Bye.